In a world where local musicians and artists are unrated, underappreciated, unnoticed, battered, abused, and swept under the rug. Living show to show without secure benefits like medieval jesters. Run with the kids. You're actually listening to it right now. I played a song for my hamster that just died. Like I said, I like Underplayed and underpaid. Real local music. Use what you have. All the can rock stuff. And the can rock stuff too. Chuck one around. We won't get into that. That was a good thing. Mondays at 6 p.m. What was special to me and really cool, amazing, incredible, and like I need to rise up to this level. Phenomenal. Definitely incredible. Probably the coolest. Strong. You're a people of Oh. <laughs> wow, you're killing me. I'll try not to swear. CFRU 93.3. Wow, the food was delicious. Had a smorgasbord of awesomeness. <laughs> it's not your, uh, your regular breakfast sausage. I also uh, ate some cocktail leaders and drank some melon liqueur one, one morning very early on the tour bus. Welcome to another installment of Underplayed and Underpaid. I am Brian McNeil, and Braden said he was going to be here, but I haven't seen uh, I haven't seen him. That's some pretty crazy stuff going on in Sudan, eh? I'm here with James Murray in the studio today from the band The Good For Knots. How you doing today, James? Oh, that's bad, Brian. How are you? I'm doing very well. I'm going to have to turn up your microphone a little bit uh, as we get settled in here. And... Um, I want to thank everybody for listening, and uh, I also want to mention that if anybody wants to get a hold of me and be interviewed for free, of course, um, live promotion for free, come in and do it live, or I can interview you ahead of time, contact Braden or myself at B-R-Y-A-N-C-F-R-U at gmail.com. That's Brian C-F-R-U, all one word, and uh, at gmail.com, and, and we'll come out and we'll hook you up, and yeah. Uh, also, you can go on Facebook, find Underplayed Ampersand underpaid and uh, like that and it'll give you a breakdown of all the the shows that have been going on over the past year it's it's almost an anniversary of, no actually yeah last month was the first anniversary of underpaid and underpaid i'm gonna pat myself on the back like barry horowitz that's a hidden uh, mention that goes back to 1990 something and uh the wwf wrestling anyway all right so james murray um can you tell a little bit about uh, your music uh, yeah, sh- uh, I'm a front of band in, uh, called The Good For Knots. Uh, we're a band out of Guelph and Kitchener and Toronto mainly. And um, we have a record out. Uh, we put a record out, uh, and it's almost sort of an almost anniversary of that record coming out uh, for us as well. So we have a record available on, on the web. And um, we're kind of um, a little bit moving in a little bit d- different direction now, I suppose, but uh, similar kind of a feel and... and um, you know, it's it's uh, it's rock and roll with you know a lot of co- acoustic guitar and and vintage you know vintage electric guitars and it's indie rock but it's uh, you know pretty old school I guess. Sweet, mm-hmm. but, uh, I like the sound of that. I like the old uh, you know the, the, when rock came out of country and there was that there was some twang in there like mm. you know some some Jimmy Page. Uh, I'm a I'm a fan of that era. So um, you said that uh, you're the the vocalist. Is that what you did? Yeah. The lead guy? Yeah, I'm the kind of the front man, I guess. And, uh, yeah, vocals and, and uh, some guitar. And uh, play a telly, so I get a lot of twang in there for that country Nice country sound, so that's all right. And uh, who else is in the band, if I may ask? A uh, bunch of guys from Kitchener uh, are in the band as well. Uh, Nick uh, plays lead guitar, Nick Guyton. Uh, Devin on, uh, plays bass. And then we have a drummer, Mike Holtham, uh, all guys from Kitchener, uh, Kitchener Wolf. Right on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, I've played, actually, over the past few weeks, I've played probably uh, 75% of the songs on your album. Can you uh, can you tell the listeners a little bit about all the work that you guys had to do and come together to put together an album and have it recorded? Uh, what, what was that process like for you? Yeah, um, long, uh, much longer than it probably should be. Uh, probably should have been, but that's just apparently the way I do things. Um <laughs> It, everything's much harder than it needs to be. Um, so that, those were basically songs I had written kind of over a five or six year period. Okay. Um, and then, you know, there's always maybe 20, 30 songs written and then you know, either songs that I hate or just don't turn out to be, you know, any good. Mm-hmm. Kind of cut those out and, and put, I think there's 11 tunes on there. Um, there, are, there are. There are 11. <laughs> there's 11 just tunes on there. Just to make sure, yeah. Um, so kind of pick the best 11 or the, the 11 that turn out the best and... 
uh, tracked it with Nick uh, Nick Iden. He runs a studio called Brixton Music in Kitchener, so I tracked it there, and that's where I met Nick, um, the guitar player. Mm-hmm. And so I tracked it there and, and mixed it there, and then sent her away to be mastered. And you know, probably about a year later, after I started the whole thing, it was it was done and out and ready to go. Right on. Uh, could you tell the listeners uh, who were your influences musically? Um, well, you know, growing up as a kid, or uh, yeah. even for the music that you're creating these days, uh, what kind of influences? Uh, who do you look up to musically? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's relatively varied. Um, I'm a music, I'm a music grad, so I went to U of G actually um, and did an honors music degree here. So, have you ever been in here before? I've never been in this room oh, before, uh. <laughs> up here before. No, but uh, certainly know uh, know U of G pretty well. Um, so, you know, anything from, I'm a 90s kid, so I, of course I grew up in Nirvana, and Pearl Jam's probably my all-time favorite of, you know, I've seen every, every show that Pearl Jam's done in, in this local, you know, in Toronto and surrounding area since probably I was 18 years old. Wow. Um, so Pearl Jam for sure, you know, and Nirvana and all the 90s, all the 90s bands, and then um, everything going back to Bob Dylan for sure, R.E.M., I used to love R.E.M. a lot, still do. Um, and then you know a lot of jazz as well. There's not you wouldn't hear any jazz on the record, but you know something I've always listened to and always really liked. Mm, no, there's a lot of interesting math with jazz. And, uh, here's a little plug for the Derek Hines Quartet, who plays every Tuesday, 8 p.m. at Van Gogh's Ear. It's a Taco Tuesday <laughs> event. Come on in and get a deal of four deluxe tacos, a hard shell for five bucks, or a big platter that you make your own tacos for ten. I always got to plug Van Gogh's because they've always been very good to me. Um, so yeah, moving on, uh, influences, um, okay, maybe not influence, but, uh, do you have a particular artist that, uh, you don't necessarily idolize, but, uh, has always been very attractive to you? Like, whether it be like Madonna or... Like or physically attractive? Hmm. No, no, attractive <laughs> in, a, uh, in, a, in a, they get your attention, like yeah. Michael Jackson or anything. Do you have any? Uh... Yeah, well, Michael Jackson for sure is always, um, I mean, just a, was a brilliant, brilliant musician and songwriter and, and dancer and everything, right? So, um, and then everything got weird, but, mm-hmm. um, but brilliant musician. Uh, so Michael Jackson, I was a big fan of Michael Jackson when I was a kid too, so he's always got my attention. Um, Pearl Jam's always got my attention for sure. I've always really liked the way that Pearl Jam's become. They're probably one of, maybe arguably, the biggest band in the world at the moment, other than maybe something like U2 or, you know. Um, but they're certainly almost on that, you know, in that stratosphere. Um, so I've really always looked up to them or admired the way they've done that without, you know, really kind of hardly any music videos, mm. um, barely did any interviews. You know, really have managed to some some a lot of longevity there, and making really good music, and not you know, making necessarily music that um, is designed to fit radio or designed to be played on radio. You're not gonna there's not gonna be you know 12 hits on every record, um, but good quality you know good quality music that's always been kind of grassroots and down to earth and just playing good rock. You know, right on. Well, good music is good music, and you mentioned uh, Bob Dylan. Mm-hmm. Um, I was I was recently in in a conversation with somebody, and they had mentioned that uh, uh, they saw a show where some young guy came out and he uh, he played a bunch of old Bob Dylan songs mm-hmm. as if he was <clears throat> no longer around. And uh, what kind of do you agree with uh, with this gentleman's point of view of well, if you're going to play you know a couple of his early big hits, you know you might want to also play something from later on in his career to. I don't know, kind of let everybody know that that guy is still alive, and uh, you know, do you also, do you agree with that? I mean, I guess he's changed. He changed so much since he began, right? I mean, he, you know, he started as as you know a guy with an acoustic guitar at, at folk festivals with a you know harmonica, and and really into that whole folk scene, and then of course when he went electric, everybody lost it on him for a while, and but you know eventually. I think I grew to accept. I mean, I wasn't alive, right? But um, when that happened, but uh, grew to accept, uh, you know, his his electric stuff. So I think it's cool to play both. I mean, obviously, you know, the early acoustic stuff um, is awesome, and then you know some of the later hits that are electric, uh, electric are, are pretty good too. So you know, if you really want to kind of, you know, display what Bob Dylan is, I think you got probably got to do both of those. 
I agree with you. All right. Well, uh, would you like to play a song at this point? And sure. Let me <laughs> get into my head and think up a few questions. Sure. All right. All right. So this is James Murray, and the song is going to be called... Uh, this is a song I wrote called No Great War, and it's sort of like, a, I don't know, I guess musings about uh, how far removed maybe my generation and kids younger than me um, are from World War One and World War Two, and whether uh, that affects us, our sort of collective psyche, so to speak. Wow, dude. All right, well, hit it off, and we'll chat about Anne Frank after.
Very nice, James. Uh, so, do uh, you want to tell the listeners a little bit about um, what uh, was going on through your mind when you were creating the song, writing the lyrics? Yeah. Uh, so that you know that one's just kind of, I guess uh, you know it's the thoughts about um, you know, like I say, kind of how far removed we are from World War One and Two, and and I guess the idea of that of that song is that. Um, Maybe some some political commentary buried in there, uh, you know, to suggest that because because we had no great war, that maybe we created one of our own. Um, just maybe you know some musings as to uh, human human instinct to maybe maybe want that conflict somewhere, even uh, even when things are maybe when it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. I'll agree with you. Um, now, uh, well. Just because everything happens to be coming together for this, I uh, it was Super Bowl weekend that just passed. Mm -hmm. uh, did you enjoy the Super Bowl? I did enjoy the Super Bowl. And, yes. Uh, and uh, anything crazy happened during halftime? I, I missed the entire <laughs> thing. The whole uh, thing. Uh, <coughs> yeah, um, the game was good. I thought, and and I was rooting for the Giants. I was kind of rooting back and forth. I didn't really have a team, but um, but I think in the end, I guess I was rooting for the Giants. And then yeah, there was the Super Bowl halftime show with with Madonna and. Uh, I missed the halftime show too, um, but then I heard that you know MIA gave the bird to everybody, uh, which I totally missed and didn't know happened, yeah. and went on and you know watching the game perfectly happy to know that nothing had had, had occurred. But anyway, it's a big uh, big talk of big talk in the media today. I don't know, right I don't really know what it's about, but yeah, everybody go check it out. Try you can and check that. it out on YouTube for sure. And you can even if you figure it out, if you get a good uh, answer from Mia Aurelar or sorry MIA. Uh, in the media, you can give us a call at 509-837-2378 and give underplayed and underpaid the lowdown on why MIA flipped the bird to the crowd at the Super Bowl halftime. And uh, well, I missed the I missed the game myself. Um, I was there at the beginning at Van Gogh's ear, eating a nice big healthy salad and reading the last ten pages of uh, the diary of Anne Frank. Mm -hmm. So uh, that that was as close to uh, as close as I got to the Super Bowl. And um, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of football. I'm more of a fan of uh, Anne Frank, I suppose. All right. So um, where have you performed? In what towns have you performed? Where have we performed? Uh, and I've been doing this for a while. So um, this band actually, the Good for Nots, is relatively new. New bands. So we're just trying to start and get to get out and, and play around town. So we've played in Guelph, and, and we got a show coming up in Waterloo mm -hmm. with Across from Roger, who I know you've uh, featured on the show a couple times, I think, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that's uh, that's coming up February sixteenth, I believe, Thursday night at Maxwell's Music House in Waterloo. So we're going to play another show with them, and we played with them, or I played with them in uh, in Guelph a few weeks ago. Is that Molly Blooms? Molly Blooms as yeah. well. That was a lot of fun. And we've done I've tons of shows um, over the years, and anything from, you know, uh, Hamilton Place in Hamilton to, you know, uh, Cool House and uh, the Reverb, uh, Rivoli, all the all the Toronto clubs and stuff. We've played play, played those before too. Very Music good. Palace was a lot of fun, like doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did you ever play at the Elma Combo by chance? I uh, played at the Elma Combo a couple times, yeah. Cool. Yeah, the downstairs, played upstairs Elma Combo and downstairs Elma Combo, yeah. I'm not, I think I only played down, or I think I was only at the downstairs, uh, like the downstairs you mean street level or yeah, the street basement? Level, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, all right. That's the only part of the Elma Combo I've been in. <laughs> There's an upstairs, I didn't, but. I didn't even know. Thank you for letting me know. Um, so, uh, out of all these venues, can you recall what perhaps the biggest venue was uh, for uh, capacity? Uh, I guess I mean I guess the cool house is the biggest probably for capacity. Right on. I would say yeah. Cool um, space in there. Uh, obviously across from Roger, but who else have you performed with uh, that still is gigging kind of locally, or even that has uh, made it to the to the point of gigging nationally or even internationally? Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't know. Over the years, I guess we've uh, played a show once with uh, way before Trouble Charger played. 
Oh, cool. Um, you know, we played, didn't play with them, I guess, but we did play in the same sort of festival. Uh, Trouble Charger and American Hi-Fi was there, too, so that was pretty cool. Sweet. And uh, you mentioned to me on the way into the, in, into the station um, that uh, you guys were in the Hard Rock Rising? Yeah, we did a uh, Hits FM. Uh, yeah, we were talking about that because of the Trues yeah. won that. Yeah, I like the Trues. Um, yeah, we did that the year before they won it. I think it was very one cool. Or two years before, but yeah, somewhere yeah. around there. That's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've I've been to big like I went to Edge Fest '97. I think that was the last time I was at a big uh, rock concert. Mm -hmm. And you know, of course, everybody in Guelph's been to the Hillside Festival, sure. but I have not been to a big rock festival in a number of years. And I'm kind of itching. So maybe this summer I'll get out and do something cool. Like, a, does Virgin still do like a Virgin Fest or whatever it's called? I usually go to uh, I go to Edge Fest still. Do you? Um, yeah, I, went there, uh, I was there this summer. Um, really cool. Sheep dogs were really awesome. They were on the second stage. It was great. I love the Arkells. Mm. Um, they were there too. So uh, and and uh, Tokyo Police Club. Good bands. So I yeah enjoyed uh, Edge Fest this summer. Terrific. For sure. All right. Well, do you feel like getting into another song? Sure. Cut your breath. Another song here. Yeah. Okay. And uh, if you want to introduce the song yeah. to the listeners. And I'll just fill in on the meantime. Yeah, he's, okay. Uh, he's changing his harmonicas. And, uh, and after this song, I think we'll play a, maybe a PSA or two, and then I'll get, let you guys all know what's going on uh, at musiclives.ca. Music dead, they think not, and they're going to give you the business. So, James, you want to introduce it and take it away? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> what I do, uh, since we were doing this uh, kind of... Explaining what the song's about, I guess I should play a song that actually is about something. It's totally up to you. <laughs> As opposed to a song where I random, I randomly ramble. Um, okay, this is uh, we'll stay on the stay on the war theme, maybe. Okay. Uh, this is a song that I wrote about uh, two separated refugees, and and one's waiting for the other one to appear, and then they never appear, and and so the, the that person says, you know, that they're going to stay there and wait until. This, uh, so the, the second person shows. Oh, wow. Here we go. On 93.3, this is Underplayed and Underpaid with Brian McNeil, University of Guelph Community Campus Radio.
we'll be back on Underplayed and Underpaid after a, after a, a moment's notice from a sponsor. So I'm back on Underplayed Underpaid with James Murray from The Good For Nots. And uh, I just belted out a, a pretty sweet uh, song that uh, kind of like triangulates for me uh, based on, you know, what's going on in Sudan today. And I just finished Anne Frank's diary. And and he's also singing about, you know, uh, uh, people finding ways to survive the war. By the way, Anne Frank's father, the only one that survived in mm. the uh, in this secret hideaway. Everybody died from typhus or other types of uh, illnesses um, in Auschwitz. It, it was really sad. I mean, they were only like a few days away from being liberated, too. It's, uh, so, uh, James, uh, could you tell, tell us, because now I'm a listener, um, do, what is your writing process? Do you, do you usually put together a nice chord uh, ensemble first, or do you have an idea of, uh, of the type of message or, or story you want to talk about uh, first? Uh, what is your writing process? Uh, yeah, it usually comes. T- uh, it might come together a couple of different ways, but ordinarily it comes, you know, just jamming on on an acoustic guitar and you know putting a, some chords together that sound nice. Uh, sometimes it, it comes together with just a melody. You know, you're singing in the shower, and then suddenly, you know, uh, you know, there's a melody there, or maybe a melody with a little bit of lyric to it, or something like that. And then then maybe pick up the guitar and, and uh, try and put them together. Um, and then after that, you know, if you can. Hopefully, um, hopefully, some kind of message just kind of flows out. If you know, if there is any, it, it should just flow out of you. Uh, as far as the lyrics go, um, you usually don't start with an idea. As far as you know, like I want to tell this particular story, or I want to, you know, want to convey this particular message. It's usually something that I'm thinking about at the time, and, and then of course it just comes out as in the lyrics, um, and then it all kind of comes. Then it, it kind of comes together at one time, right? You just kind of start playing, and then. You know, some lyrics come to you, and once you've got a few, then you've got more, and then you've got a story, and then you finish the story off, and then you can kind of think about, um, you know, creating a message out of, you know, one or two little ideas that you've had kind of pop into your head. And, um, so sometimes things come together really quickly, which is usually when things come together and they, they sound good. Other times you sit there for hours and, and you have to kind of, it's like a chore, you've got to finish this song because I started it, yeah. you finish it, and those tend to be the ones that, that hit the cutting room floor, I think, but... Uh, I'm part of the process, nonetheless, I think. Your first song that you ever wrote, recorded, mm-hmm. or, or even just wrote and, uh, and played for friends, uh, can you tell the listeners a little bit about that type of an experience? Uh, again, your writing process, uh, what was it about, and uh, do you still play it? Uh, I don't even know if I could tell you what the first song is that I mm-hmm. wrote. Uh, it was probably about maybe 16 or so uh, when I wrote that. First song, um, definitely don't still play it, uh, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, but I think it was a decent song. That first song I wrote, I wrote a song called Inconsistent, I think, uh-huh. um, which I find extraordinarily cheesy now, but occasionally a friend will still say, hey, you know, I like that. I used to like that tune. Um, I, my problem is I write a song and then I hate it two weeks later, right? Mm-hmm. So other people like it. If other people like it, then I'll keep playing it, I guess. Um, but yeah, that was probably the first song I wrote, and I think we I had a band in in high school, and uh, we didn't have a singer. We just we had a bunch of guys, you know, making a lot of noise on on electric guitars, and so I think at some point we kind of decided, well, somebody's got to sing the song, right? So I think I said, okay, well, I'll try, and tell me if it sucks. And nobody said it sucked, so I think I just kind of continued singing after that. That's a that's a good story. Um, okay, uh, do you have any advice for uh, young musicians or? Uh, uh, musicians who are who are you know getting into the field of wanting to gig, um, you know on either you know your your PR or um, who's the one guy that you want to make sure is your best friend when you go into a, a gig. Uh, do you have any pointers for any band members or any bands uh, in that respect? Um, well, I, d- I guess I could only say you know maybe what's worked for me. I don't know if I'm qualified to give anybody advice on anything really, um, but. Uh, I know. I guess I know what's worked for me, and and, and that's just um, you know, kind of being being uh, you know, networking with other musicians. Really, you know, is the best way to uh, to get to know people, and um, and uh, it's probably the the most fun way to, to to build your band anyway, right? Because as a musician, I tend to like to hang out with musicians, and we like to talk about music and jam and stuff like that. So it's just easy to become friends with other other musicians in town or wherever you're from, and. 
um, and then you kind of you can kind of uh, feed off each other to a certain uh, to a certain extent and inspire each other. You're competing against each other to you know to a certain extent to to uh, to be better, right? And in a good way, and then. Um, and you get gigs and shows together, and you've got somebody to call up to, uh, you know, to book a show, and, and uh, you kind of grow as a, a scene, mm -hmm. you know, together. And I think that's the best way to, to go about it. Yeah, very good. Do uh, you feel like playing another song? Sure. All right. So uh, you can, as you get ready, or, or whenever you're ready, tell the the listeners a little bit about uh, the song. <coughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah, this song is. Um, well, it's a song I finished uh, on the weekend, I think. I just finished this one off, so this is going to be a new one we're working on for a, a new record. That um, We're going to start gigging some of these songs to kind of road test them a little bit. and then uh, Exclusive. And then start, <laughs> and then start uh, yeah, and start uh, making another record. So uh, this one's kind of evolving. You know, it, it may turn out to be nothing. It may be something good, but um, this one's called Another Long Name for You. Okay. This one's called um, Til When the Mighty Have Fallen and the Great Guns Go Dead. When the mighty have fallen and the great guns go dead. Yeah, All right. <laughs> so on 93.3, anyway. this is James Murray, underplayed and underpaid.
Another lovely tune by the the artist James Murray from the band The Good For Nots. I want to say thank you. And could you please repeat the name of that, the long name of that song, <laughs> yeah, uh, that When the Mighty Guns Have Fallen? That one is called, uh, now I've forgotten it. When the Mighty Guns Have Fallen. <laughs> Till the Mighty Have Fallen and oh. the Great Guns Go Dead. Uh, we'll have to get back and fix that. that th- th- yeah. Um, well, thank you very much uh, for playing in here. Uh, another played, another paid today, and I just uh, I got to do my weekly jaunt around uh, jaunt around musiclives.ca. If you want to know what's going on in town in Guelph downtown Guelph, musiclives.ca is a place to go. So uh, tonight, Paul McLeod, two sets with local musician Paul McLeod, two dollar mixed drinks before twelve, two and two, nineteen plus free show. He'll go on stage maybe at 10, but more likely about 11. Uh, live jazz tomorrow night, uh, Derek Hines Quartet. When, in fact, Derek will not be part of the show tomorrow. Uh, Mike Rittenhouse has been given the task of making sure that it's it's a well-put-together jazz show, but it's going to be a little different if you're uh, used to seeing uh, Derek Hines Quartet on Tuesdays at Van Gogh's Ear. Mike Something, three sets with the Test Icicles, own Mike Something at uh, Doogie's and Pablo's, 19 plus. 10 p.m. No cover, and that's on Tuesday also. Name that tune at Jimmy Jazz with Aaron Dale. Uh, DJ Delicioso at Van Gogh's Ear on Wednesday. And um, open stage hosted by Guelph musician Kent at uh, Molly Blooms, and that's on Thursday, 10 p.m. No cover. Uh, Van Gogh's Ear live with Little City. Game Music Subsidiary Night Owl Promotions Number Eight Toronto Band The Little City with special guests Waterloo musician Anthony Damiao Damiao kind of looks like it's Brazilian and Guelph artist Rags 9 p.m. 19 plus free show that's on Thursday February 9th at Van Gogh's Ear and the Hot Carls three sets with the Guelph band the Hot Carls pop punk top 40 80s covers all night long 19 plus no cover 10 p.m. at Doogies and Pablos on Friday. So, if you want to go ahead and check out anything further on musiclives.ca, they got listings that go for weeks. And I uh, always got to say thank you to Aaron Dale for all his uh, kind words and, uh, and, and help with me helping out this other band. So, um, yeah, big ups to musiclives.ca. Check it out so you know what's happening uh, downtown Guelph. All right, so let's, uh, let's kind of get back to James Murray from The Good For Nots, who just played another song. And uh, I got some more questions. Have you ever taken vocal training? If so, how many sessions uh, was it? Uh, or did you have you know somebody else who had taken vocal training help you? Because you definitely have uh, a, a good ability to sing. So um, can you give a little bit of help to the to the the novice bands out there? Uh, yeah, I did. I did do some vocal training. Uh, I didn't do a lot of it, uh, but I did do some. And. Uh, you know, and I guess I've, I've kind of worked on my technique to try and, and become a decent singer. Um, you know, I'm not a singer, and I'm not a guitar player either, really. Um, I, You know, I'm both, obviously, I guess, to a certain extent, but I primarily think of myself as a songwriter. Um, so, you know, playing guitar and singing is, is you know, necessary necessary tools that, that, that I have to have. So, um, so I, I wouldn't say that I'm sort of like a, a technique-based vocalist at all. Mm. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing, uh, but I have worked on, you know, have worked on some technique and, t- and taken some sessions because you kind of have to, I think, and, and at least to get the basics. And I'm a very slow learner, so somebody's got to show me what to do before I get it, and it takes a while to get through, uh, get through to me. So um, a few sessions for sure, and then, um, but actually just, you know, kind of working on. 
on some technique um, myself, you know, having read some books and done some research and stuff, working on technique, you know, consciously trying to to improve that way and I should probably take some more vocal <laughs> some more vocal yeah. training but uh, I feel like taking it I myself just idea. for fun yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for, for saying that uh, actually I interviewed somebody not too long ago and I said hey so when your band did the lead singer ever take vocal training and the answer was no and that band doesn't perform anymore so yeah. maybe it goes hand in hand I'm not sure but uh, alright uh, on a lighter note uh, do you have any crazy stories from any uh, gig that you've either, either been at or been performing at or, or any, like just just a very memorable story that sticks out in your mind um boy I don't know the only time the only things I kind of like I remember really good shows where you know the crowd was there was just a great crowd and everybody's really into it and and we had a lot of fun um you know, the, uh, those are always memorable. And then for some reason, the only kind of crazy stories, I don't know how crazy it is, but are the things that go wrong, right? Uh -huh. There's always that gig where, you know, just nothing goes right. Whether it's, you know, your voice goes, and then, you know, I think we had one where the drum kit was moving around. Like it wasn't, it wasn't set properly where it was supposed to be, and so we started playing, right? And you have this kind of fancy intro where you're introduced and you come out to play, and, you know, I was playing in a... Uh, I was playing in a kind of harder rock band at the time. And, you know, you want that that really awesome intro tune, right, to mm -hmm. just really punch people right in the face. And then, you know, you break a guitar string and, and the, the, the kick drum <laughs> flies out from where it's supposed to be and you actually have to stop the song. Mm -hmm. right? And it's, there's nothing worse than than sort of a lame intro where you come out and, and screw up the first tune and have to start over again, right? So mm -hmm. That reminds me of a video I saw last week. I think it's a, a more recent one where... Uh, the guitarist in, a, in a, what seemed to be a heavier band, although they were playing in the middle of the day, um, he went to swing his guitar around him, mm -hmm. and the strap broke, and oh, he geez. just basically launched his guitar into the parking lot behind. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh and rewatch and rewatch because yeah. uh, you know you don't see that every day. That's a high risk move. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Uh, how, how do listeners find your music online? Um, yeah, you can you can uh, check us out in a number of places. So uh, we have a website, goodfornots.com, thegoodfornots.com, and that will pretty much link you to everything. Um, and but, that's uh, that's good for not N A U G H T S. Yeah. S. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. N A U G H T S. All right. Cool. Um, so thegoodfornots.com or facebook.com slash thegoodfornots. And uh, there's a really cool, for any bands out there that don't know about this website, I think most probably do, but there's a really cool site we've been using called Bandcamp. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're on there as well. And actually, the Facebook page, when you, when you hit facebook.com slash thegoodfornauts, takes you right to our Bandcamp app, and, and uh, it allows us to sell the music there uh, to everybody in various different formats, right? Like, not just MP3, but you can, you can download the album actually in, in higher uh, audio quality files that aren't uh, that are lossless quality, wow. which is kind of cool if you're really into that. Um, so you can do that, and it's right there on Facebook. Um, it'll come up. That Bandcamp app comes up with all the tunes, and actually you can preview and listen to the whole album um, without ever purchasing it. Uh, as many times as you want, you can listen to the whole thing there for free uh, and, uh, and preview all the tunes till you know till you're blue in the face. Terrific. And if anybody uh, you know uh, didn't catch that, they can always go to Underplayed and Underpaid on the Facebook and uh, like that, and uh, well, I'll have all the links up as soon as I get home for uh, for James Murray and the Good for Knots pages. Um, can you please repeat your next gig, your upcoming gig, the gig that you got going on? Yeah, we have uh, Thursday night, February sixteenth, at Maxwell's Music House in Waterloo, mm -hmm. and we're playing with uh, it'll be us and across from Roger uh, from Guelph as well, and there'll be somebody to be named. Uh, there'll probably be three bands on that bill, and uh, nine o'clock, nineteen plus, uh, five bucks, and uh, yeah, we'll be playing new stuff. So we'll be playing a couple of the tunes I played today, which is a lot of new stuff and some old stuff from the record that's uh, that's online. Very good. Um, what was the last book that you read? What was the last book that I read? Wow. Um, sort of put you on the spot. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I think it was um, through Black Spruce. I read. Through, uh, what, what's, what's that about? That is fiction, a sequel to a. It's fiction, okay. and it's a sequel to a book called *The Road*, 
which was a very popular book. And Through Box Bruce was also a very popular Canadian writer whose name escapes me, sorry. Um, and it was a friend that sort of turned me on to that book. Um, and a really cool, really great book, The Road and, um, and Through Black Spruce, Canadian. It's about uh, Native Americans, um, kind of from, their, from this one girl's point of view, and actually from two different points of view. It's from a, a father's point of view and a daughter's point of view, and uh, coming to Toronto and, uh, I don't know, all sorts of stuff you'd recognize, a good Canadiana in there. Right on. That sounds like an interesting book. Um, if you could have dinner with anyone alive or dead of any era, who would it be and why? Right. I know you warned me about this one. I did. Uh, I did. And then I thought about it, and then I became obsessed with it for about five <laughs> to ten minutes. And then uh, I don't know what happened. I, I mean, I guess I would say, you know, alive or dead, right? So, you know, it's got to be kind of my two biggest influences, I, I would say. I mean, I, you know, I'd, I'd like to think I, I could come up with something better, but th those are the people I'd want to talk to, I think, and maybe pick their brain. So Bob Dylan, I think, would be number one, uh, you know, just to talk about songwriting and and you know writing good finger pointing songs right which is what he does yeah and then um and maybe eddie vetter right you know two two big uh, two big heroes so i think it would have to be them and then we mentioned um mentioned michael jackson too and i think if i alive i'd say bob dylan and eddie vetter and then you know in the dead category i'd probably say michael jackson and just you know uh see what he was really like right because yeah. he just had this weird image as to what you know what he was and and everything was so strange at the end that you know what was happening in his, with him and stuff and you just me yeah. sit down and get you know the real story about you know what he was really like i think would be cool yeah i agree with you and i did a little bit of digging myself and i'll share some documentary links with you later on oh yeah cool of course we can't talk about that type of stuff on the radio i got in trouble once already before <laughs> so all right i want to i want to kind of slow things down here we only got four minutes or three minutes left so I think I'm just going to say peace out for now. Thanks, everybody, for listening in. And I want to thank James Murray from the Good For Knots for coming out, strumming some tunes, playing some harmonica, and uh, and singing along, and, and you know really making underpaid and underpaid a show that is about promoting local talent. So I'll repeat this. If you want to get a hold of Braden or myself, at, you do it at B-R-Y-A-N-C-F-R-U at gmail.com and we'll come out and we'll do an interview with you or we'll we'll pull you into the studio and have you come in and do your thing live so again i want to say thanks to everybody thanks again james hope to have you back again sometime and uh i'm gonna go ahead and play a song by mike todd trio called angels and i'll catch you next week Got no one to put me out, burning up. And everybody has their doubts. Waiting on me to have nothing to prove. Waiting on me to have nothing to lose, yeah. Oh, I'm a loser. Because your angels and they'll do their part. Because your angels and they'll do their part. Because your angels. Desperation, stand me up. Give me some inspiration. You saw something no one else could see. Help me be the man I was meant to be. Yeah, oh, I was meant to be. Be kind to your angels and they'll do their part. Be kind to your angels and they'll do their part. Be kind to your angels and they'll. Do That you hate to be alone Since she found a way back home so thank you, my angel Said so thank you, my angel Said so thank you, my angel
We can't kill rangers and they'll do their part. We can't kill rangers and they'll do their part. We can't kill rangers and they'll do their part. We can't kill rangers and they'll do their part. We can't kill rangers and they'll do their part. We can't kill rangers and they'll do their part. We can't kill rangers and they'll do their part. We can't kill rangers and they'll do their part. For ages we have created music with musical instruments as we change the instruments changed and somewhat less apparently as the instrument changed we changed for the most part this happens slowly with the occasional breakthrough or innovation shaking the f-